Hello everyone. Today I will tell you something about HFVTTCs. The story all begins with this simple circuit here. This one here is a vacuum tube, a triode. The high voltage power source goes through a RF choke to the tube's plate or anode and also to the main resonant coil here. This one here is a feedback coil. Actually, it's a ring around the end of the main resonant coil. The ring is connected to the tube's grid through a blocking capacitor in case there is an arc from the breakpoint to the feedback ring. If you don't have this blocking capacitor, the arc will destroy your grid. This one here is a grid leak, a grid leak resistor to obtain a certain negative voltage on the tube's grid. This one functions like this. Some electrons will fly over here from the cathode to the anode, but some of them will land on this grid. So if you don't have this resistor, the negative voltage will build up and finally the tube will be cut off. If you have this resistor here, the electrons go here, clockwise, and it is like a current going counterclockwise. So you have a you have a negative voltage on the resistor. This one here is minus, and here is positive on ground. So you will have a good negative voltage on the tube's grid. This circuit functions easily and I made some improvements that if you use a larger tube which needs more drive power you actually need a capacitor from the main resonant capacitor to the grid and I added a RF choke from the grid to the grid leak capa resistor to block the RF energy from going to the ground if you don't have this resist uh, this RF choke, it will work, but the output will be limited because some of the driving power is lost. And this schematic here, you will also find it on the web. You actually will find these two schematics. Usually this schematic, uh, the, the tube here, may be a pentode, like G, U50 or a tetrode like GK71. Actually, these two tubes are very popular for HF SSTCs. And this circuit here, you will actually, uh, this tube is GU5B, a triode vacuum tube, um, a, a forced uh, air cooled vacuum tube. Maybe the plate dissipation around 3 kilowatts or 2.5 kilowatts, I don't remember that. Uh, this is a main coil and this is a main resonant coil. And I made some improvements of this circuit. Because I found this circuit is easier to tune than this one. Um, let's look at it. Firstly, this is still a triode, and this is still the RF choke. Uh, what I noticed is that if you look at a HF SSTC high frequency solid state tesla coil, you will actually see a schematic like this. This one here is a RF choke. This is a main resonant coil, and the, the resonant tank circuit is looking like this, through the coil, through the capacitor, and through the divider capacitors. Also, this capacitor is in parallel with the G, D, uh, GS capacitor in the MOSFET. And uh, through this is the resonant tank circuit. And this circuit have a matching coil, impedance matching coil here. This is a breakout point. That makes me adding a matching coil here. 
I did some calculations. Then um, I found that uh, in my circuit, this triode is actually a Japanese-made uh, 785 RB triode, which have a plate dissipation at 2.5 kilowatt and output po RF power 5.1 kilowatt. Uh, the impedance of this tube is 4.2 kilo ohms. Uh, this one we can simplify that circuit like this. I use the oscilloscope to measure the oscillating frequency at 20 megahertz, and this is the tube's internal impedance. This capacitor here is actually the tank circuit capacitance, which equals to this 220 picofarad capacitor. I see this vacuum variable capacitor at its uh, largest value, 220 picofarads. And this capacitor in series with the great cathode capacitor here. That capacitor of this tube equals to 19 pic uh, picofarads. And I added another 30, uh, 13.6 picofarad capacitor in parallel with the grid cathode capacitor. So these uh, three capacitors, we have a 28.6 a picofarad capacitor. And the, this part of the circuit, left side, is the source impedance. And this 5.11 uh, microhenry matching coil is actually this coil here. The resistor in series with a 10, cupo, 10 picofarad capacitor to ground uh, is a model for the arc, the plasma flame. Uh, these values is from Steve Ward. Uh, he's, uh, he's some, he has some very nice Tesla coils and also his HFSSTC has a power output around 3 kilowatt. You should watch that video. Uh, this value is from Steve Ward. And if you use these uh, values, you will match the impedance of the flame into the internal uh, the internal impedance of the tube. But uh, you should notice that this is not simply an inductor. Uh, this uh, this schematic is not perfect because the inductor or the matching coil has a has a, maybe some coupling coefficient co coupling coefficient with the main resonant coil. You should uh, you should turn these values into the primary side of the transformer. You should do that calculation not simply this circuit. I said this is not a, a perfect, perfect schematic. I draw it wrong. And uh, this afternoon, I did some change. It's very simple. I simply turned these two wires, turned these two wires like this. The anode is connected to the center of the coil and the feedback capacitor actually connects to the ground. I did this change and I found this will improve the performance of the circuit a lot. The power will be larger and the efficiency will be higher. I don't know what caused this change. If you know that, please leave your comments under my video. Uh, I don't understand that because I found the impedance matching network in this circuit looks as uh, this matching coil and the, the 
uh, the matching capacitor here in this circuit actually is the C, C from anode to cathode. That is, that is only 0.5 picofarad. And I calculated the impedance use this uh, schematic idea, and I found that the impedance if you if you draw a circuit like this from this circuit you will find the impedance from the le left side of the circuit is actually around 3.9 kilo ohm and that is too large for a 400 ohm arc that is a very strange but this work circuit works very well and the the, co the efficiency is much higher than this circuit um I don't know why this happens. Mm. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this one actually works. The circuit uh, is actually this one. That part of the circuit is the high voltage anode supply, and this is the filament supply, and uh, the high voltage supply is. The power is from this variac, 10 kV amperes. And this is a great current meter, great leak resistors around 4 kilo ohms. And uh, these two capacitors, I, I bring my circuit to here. These two capacitors, we can see that each of the capacitor is rated at 10 kV, 6.8 picofarads. The two capacitors is actually this one or this one. This one this one is 13.6 picofarad. These two capacitors they will uh, they will make the pulse wise longer. The time is longer and uh, the feedback capacitor connects to the bottom of the resonant coil and to this variable capacitor in parallel with this capacitor in series of this 1500 picofarad protection capacitor of in case this va va this vacuum capacitor have an arc internally uh, I added a 1500 picofarad protection capacitor in series of, of of these two feedback capacitors and uh, it connects to the grid plate of the vacuum tube. This is an anode anode connected to the resonant coil uh, some point in the middle of the resonant coil and the upper side of the coil is actually the matching part of the coil. This is a breaking out point that is the RF choke from the high voltage power supply uh, positive side. Okay, let's turn the light off and have this one running for a test. Firstly, I set the variac to a round. Um, oh no, the filament is not on. I turn on the filament. This is a uh, this is a wire for the soft start, and when the filament starts glowing, I short out this little wire. It's hot now for soft starting of the filament. I set the variac 50 volts and make the point get hotter for better thermal emission. Okay, let's set it more. We will have a break now break out now actually. Still need to have more voltage. Okay, okay. Oh, it's extinguished. The electrode needs to be hotter for better thermal emission. Okay, now let's see how this circuit performance. That is a very powerful arc. 
the length the length of the arc actually reaches around 45 centimeters another show begin 45 centimeters okay the tube isn't hot thanks for watching